Okay, recording now. Welcome everybody to week four, day two. So, put music on the gunshot, right, right. right. Um, yeah, so, in order to play sounds in Quake C, uh, there's two steps. You first have to do a pre-cache on it. Um, if you open up weapons.qc, you'll see there's a bunch of pre-cache um, sounds. What you need to do is, um, well, step one, I guess, is get, get the sound, you know, like, uh, I guess we can go through this from the top. Uh, so, what is it called? Uh, open game resources or something like that? Open game art, yeah. Um, so this is actually a really good website for uh, people that are starting off making games. So, um, let's do a sound effect of some sort. 512 sound effects, RPG sound. Okay, so let's make it so that, uh, I don't know, it uh, plays some like Final Fantasy style fight music uh, when you, um, I don't know, fire weapon or something. Alright, so, uh, I forgot the line, I don't know. okay, um, where do we go to download it? Okay, so first step is you find some sound effects, uh, whatever. Uh, I'm then going to uh, pull this out and put it into quick release, fortress, sounds. And, uh, yeah, you see there's folders in here. You don't need to put it into a folder. You just drop it into the sound directory. So I'm going to hit paste and I'm going to rename this to be, uh, fight music dot wave. Okay. Double click it to make sure it works using what iTunes. Uh, I will be able to change the music like on Grand Theft Auto. I'm thinking too big. Um, yeah, yeah. So soundtrack is is quite doable. Um, so like when you switch to weapon. Oh, that's not the same one. Hmm. All right. Let's see if we can find out which. Which one was the fight music that I liked? Pretty sure Jerusalem Ridge is not this one. Yeah, so you could put all of these into your sound file, uh, sound folder. Um, all right, I'll call it Chip Tune. Oh, okay, it's playing. All right, I'm gonna try again. Okay, so we got Chip Tune, and I'm just going to. I could click on things. Here we go. Just copy that over. Okay. So step one. Put a put a new sound into your sound directory, or you can do this five times. 
it's all good. I'm just going to do it once to show you how. Okay, so step one, you copy the sound in. Step two, you are going to edit the source code. It's called chiptune.wave. Okay. So I'm going to open up the um, Visual Studio Code. Uh, make sure you're using Visual Studio Code, not regular Visual Studio. Um, source control, get ignore source code now. Whatever. Okay. Um, so under weapons.qc, um, uh, just uh, search for um, precache. And what you'll find is that you'll see all these existing precache sounds. And just click on uh, any of the ones, really. Um, World.qc. Uh, weapons, yeah, weapon precache, okay, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'll come in here, and I usually notate when I make a change, um, just because, I don't know. All right, so what you do is you just copy and paste, and uh, you'll notice this one's actually for things in the weapons folder. Um, we're not putting it into, we didn't put it into a folder. So it's just going to be here. It's going to be chiptune.wave. Okay. And uh, then uh, this function gets called when the when the mod loads. And what it does is it creates an, a, a sort of inventory of all of the different sounds the world uses. And so if a person connects to the server and they don't have chiptune.wave, what happens is the server is like, hey, you want chiptune? chiptune.wave and the client's like yeah and the server will actually download it to him which is really nice uh, a lot of modern games don't do that like if you connect to a server and they've got a mod running it'll be like sorry you got to go download the mod uh, in quake if you connect to the server uh, you can turn it off of course on either the client or the server end but basically if you connect to a server and the server's like hey you need this because the server because of all these pre-caches it has a list of all the different assets you need and it just sends that list over to the client the client's like oh i'm missing chiptune and the server's like, all right, I got you, fam, and sends it to them. So this is a really nice feature here. And also make sure that all of your files are loaded when the game launches so that you don't get hitches in gameplay when it loads things off disk. So this is going to pre-cache chiptune. Hopefully it's not too big. I don't know if there's any size limits on it. Seven megs, which is bigger than, than most sounds in Quake. Um, so we'll see if that causes a problem. Um, bu -bu 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 -bum. okay, so now that we've got this, then we want to play a sound. And the way you play a sound is just with sound. Uh, so here is an example of sound. Um, the uh, nearest thing I can think of to um, what you're trying to do, uh, you can't hear it. No. Uh, Visual Studio came with the computer, how do you get the other one? Uh, VS Code. And so that's the website here. I'll right click copy and paste over here. Um, yeah, the, the other one does not have the Quake C plugin, so it doesn't do all the cool syntax highlighting. Uh, the Quake C plugin is only for VS Code, not for Visual Studio. I find it um, um, confusing. That they have two different uh, source code editors that sound very similar to each other. So, um, okay. So ORF is uh, the name of Carl ORF, who composed Carmina Burana. Um, sound, ambiance. Oh, you guys can't hear the music right because I have noise filtering on. Uh, yeah, VS Code is really a text editor, but it, you know you can set it up so that it has the ability to build inside of it. So, you know. okay, so here's ORF. Uh, if I switch my streaming window, you're about to start playback. Yeah, I get a copyright strike for that. That'd be funny. All right. So, uh, no, I guess I'll play the chip tune for you. Sound uh, chip tune.
So that's the chip tune. Uh, let me switch back over. So Carmina Burana is uh, something my daughter likes listening to right now, I guess. Um, and uh, famous, uh, famous uh, opera written in the 1800s by Carl Orff, who was uh, also an educator, a big fan of the pentatonic scale. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's one of the most like like that piece there is very peaceful, but the uh, the opening track is very like powerful so if, if you guys want to do yourself a favor uh well i guess i'll risk the copyright here i'll, I'll pause i'll pause the recording so i don't get copyright strike for playing 200 year old music that's not quite 200 years old but... all right so that's actually a really good recording uc tv huh uc davis nice very nice uc davis um so yeah, it's it's really important when you're making a game to think about what kind of mood you're going for, and the inclusion of the Carla Orff track uh, was actually part of um, a cutscene in Team Fortress. They actually made it so when you launched the mod, it played like this this cutscene, and uh, they were going for like um, something classy, I guess. So I I took it because the the asset already existed. You don't have to download it to people, and so I made it so that when uh, there's a chaplain in the game. You, the ch you could sing basically and you can run around singing and stuff like that so um I, I sort of repurposed it for my my mod okay um you play the double bass or that bow is made out of horse hair um okay um i don't know i i, I played the viola for a while and uh yeah i think it was horse hair right the, the bow is made out of So, um, yeah, the, the, the back part of it is the, um, more expensive part. I had, I had a carbon fiber and a Pernambuco, Pernambuco, Pernambuco bow. Um, and, and the bow actually really does make a difference in the sound of your, of your instrument. So you're supposed to spend about half as much on your bow as you are on your, um, Uh, on your instrument itself. Okay, so this is how you actually play a sound. And so there's a function called sound, and it is going to be attached to yourself, so the sound will follow you around wherever you go. Uh, there is a music channel, and so uh, the way the channels work is that if you play something on a channel and there's a sound already playing, then it will uh, overwrite that, um, it'll overwrite whatever's playing there with a new thing. So what you might want to do, um, Simmons, is uh, set up a timer. Um, there's lots of examples of timers in here. Um, in fact, that um, perhaps might be a timer. Um, where you spawn something, you set the next thing to be 30 seconds from now. So you set the next thing to be time plus 30. So 30 seconds from now, it'll trigger again. Uh, the function, you're gonna have to create a function. Just you know, copy and paste an existing function. And just have it play this song over and over again. Or you can, I think you can set the, the wave file itself to loop. And then, so the sound function, uh, this is the person the sound is attached to. This is the channel. So it'll overwrite whatever uh, music was already playing. This is the path to the file name. So it would just be uh, chiptune.wave with what I have now. No, no folder because I didn't put it into a folder. This is the volume. And this is the attenuation. Um, and so I'm just using normal. Normal attenuation. Uh, let's see if I can see if there's other options on that. It should be on def stuck. Idle static no attenuation. Yeah, you might want to use no attenuation. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter though because you're playing it on yourself, and so there, attenuation means how a sound gets quieter as you move away from it. And so normal attenuation. Uh, the further you are away from a sound, the quieter it is, and if there's a wall or something in between, that, that obviously affects it as well. So uh, no attenuation means it just plays at the same volume, but uh, because you're attaching it to yourself, um, there's no distance, so there's no attenuation anyway, so it honestly doesn't matter. Okay, so, yep. So just look at existing code for uh, playing a sound, and the the thing you're looking for, like if you just want it to play when you switch to a weapon, uh, the switch.
switch weapon code is in weapons IQC also. Uh, oh, interesting. Huh, weird. Um, for like one of the weapons randomly a nail gun um, okay. so this is the uh, this is the variable that holds which weapon you currently have and so what you could ha what you could do is write a timer that every 30 seconds fires off it checks to see what your current weapon is and it switches the music to it uh, based on your current weapon so like when the game begins you just fire off one timer and then um, Every 30 seconds it runs, it checks your... Or you can have it, I don't know, fire every second so it responds more quickly. I don't know. Uh, but, or, that, that's one way you can do it. Or another way is, there's this command here called cycle weapon command. It's what gets called if you, like, mouse, mouse wheel down, things like that to switch weapons. Then what happens is, this is how it switches weapons. So, um... If you switch to the sniper rifle, if you switch to the super shotgun, you can just add a sound there and just play different chip tunes or whatever it is you're gonna do. So I just you could just add like a sound function here, right? Like sound self um, chip tune dot wave. channel music, right? So self, channel music, shiptune.wave, um, full attenuation, uh, full volume, I mean, uh, attenuation, normal, or none, doesn't really matter. And a semicolon. So, um, Let's set this to sniper rifle. Okay. So when you equip the sniper rifle, then it will start playing this chiptune music. Okay. So let's save it. And then I'm going to come in here. And uh, you copy and paste the sound code and just edit it. Like, uh, yeah, basically you should always be copying and pasting things. So just look look at look at how, yeah yeah rather than typing it from scratch yeah yeah copy, copying and pasting is is the way of the modder that is that is the uh, the process we use you you just look you you look at existing stuff and just be like oh okay copy paste and then change whatever it is you want to change so um, click release I'm gonna build it all right uh, all right so launch server. Okay. Launch client. And then I'll switch that to my primary screen so you guys can hear it. Goes back. Keep one sniper. I have a jello water turned on. That's funny. So the water, uh, the water bounces you. This is actually one of my favoriteest bugs that became a feature. Um, so when I was trying to get the scuba commander to work, I, uh, 
I the way that it works is that it sort of manually adjusts your uh, Z position or your Z velocity to um, get, make you buoyant essentially. So scuba commandos don't sink in the water; they just kind of hover there. And uh, I, I accidentally turned the buoyancy up too high, and it flung me up out of the water. And I realized it was actually kind of fun. You could actually sit there and bounce on the water. And so I just made it a surfer option where you could uh, uh, enable jello water. And then uh, it actually, uh, and if you hold down jump, you stick to it and you can launch. Um, so it actually worked out to be a pretty cool. Um, uh, Attorney, before you keep going, you're not streaming. I'm not streaming. Oh, I switched the screen to it. Okay. All right, there we go. So, so you see Jello Water, um, and it actually opens up tactical, um, tactical options because um, maps will change kind of dramatically if the water allows you to bounce off of it, like a trampoline. Uh, okay, so let me play the uh, chip tune again. So if I switch to the sniper rifle. For some reason, these sounds are looping. I broke something. Yeah, so there you go. So, uh, there we have. Switching the screen back here. I might have to see if I broke something in this. Because uh, the song, the sound, every time I play a sound, it just keeps looping automatically, which is not how it's supposed to work. So, it's possible something broke along the way. Uh, or maybe it was Windows updating or something. I don't know. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, that was a, that was that would be an example of how a bug can turn into a feature. You know, you, you do something accidentally. It's actually really cool, and you're just like, all right, cool. I'm just gonna keep it. So uh, Jello Water is just a global variable, and uh, info key is how you can read things from your configuration file on the server. So if you want to make your your mod, whatever it is you guys are doing, uh, if you want to make it so that the uh, the server person can turn it on or turn it off, then you can do info key world. It's always world. Um, so it's going to read the server's um, uh, configuration value. Well, it's not always world. You can read configuration value from the clients too, but we don't care about them. We don't care about them right now. And so um, J. So it's going to read whatever configuration value J has. So what the hell does that mean? Well, let's take a look. So quick release, Fortress. There is a file called cpserver.cfg. So if you open that up, that is the configuration file for your server. And uh, uh, change, change your password, by the way, so it's not the default here. Um, and so it's a 30 minute long game or a hundred kills. Uh, you can adjust gravity up or down. Uh, you can, uh, adjust how many players can be on the server, how many spectators can be on the server. If you're going to allow people downloading models and sounds like we just talked about, um, how much money you get to <clears throat> customize your class. And so right here, you can see that I've got local info J on. So the difference between the local local info and server info, server info actually gets broadcast. And so if you're if you're in the server browser, uh, the server browser will show you all of the servers online in the world, and you can look to see. All right, I want to find a server that has twenty thousand money instead of ten thousand money. So this, a ser anything that's in the server info gets sent to a, a master server. That's what they're called, uh, that that is used for like server browsers and things like that. Local info is not. It's just kept locally. There's a limit to how much server info you can have, so most of the stuff here is going to be a local info. Uh, but from the code's perspective, you just use info key. And so if I do info key RJ, it'll return two. Um, so the info key function just reads through the configuration files. And so um, I think there's going to be an info key, key 
key, info key world, or J, somewhere like that. Might be the, there you go. Okay, so uh, it'll read that from the configuration file, and uh, and it's and then uh, it, it always returns a string. And so if you want to convert it to a number, you can use string to float like that. And uh, that will uh, convert it to a floating point number. And so RJ is used for how much uh, rocket jump you, you get. So if you set it to two, if you shoot yourself in the foot with a rocket, you fly twice as far as you would normally. So um, there's a bunch of ways of, there's a lot of keys and things like that. This turns on the grappling hook, which Shammy needs. Um, uh, this controls how much damage snipers do. So snipers on my server do 90% of damage, so they do a little a little less damage. Um, yeah. So that's how you do like configuration data and stuff like that. Discord kicked you out. Okay. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of things we could talk about with the mod. Um, I do kind of want to go over a little more linear algebra because I realize we haven't talked about uh, matrices yet. And that's kind of important. So, uh, unless, well, uh, I, I don't want to rush you guys. Is there any other, um, you know, bit of info you need to know, either about Unreal Engine to get your mod to work or uh, Quake C to get that to work? don't have any. Okay. I'll get my tablet plugged back in. I just, oh I'm gonna have to move my whole bookshelf. So I got a bookshelf back over here and uh, all that stuff, Raspberry Pis, uh, my compressor filler, all my Japanese books, all that stuff's gonna have to get moved because Comcast is coming out tomorrow and, and that might come out in the middle of class too so might have a short class tomorrow <laughs> lab time whenever the internet gets will be working but Phone. Sorry about that. So, uh, the uh, the uh, micro USB port is very poorly soldered in on those things, and so if I uh, move the microphone, the whole thing turns off. Sorry about that. So uh, there are three basic transformations in 3D games or 3D engines. It doesn't have to be a game. Translation, rotation, and scaling. Okay. So translation is moving things around. Rotation, it is rotating it, scaling is being, making bigger and smaller. So uh, you guys should be familiar with this from Unreal Engine, right? You've got W, E, and R, right? And uh, those are the three basic things you do. There's more than that. There's skew and there's other weird stuff. Uh, but these are like the three 
the three basic ones. You guys, you guys cool with that? Like conceptually with what translation, rotation, and scaling is? Yeah? Okay. Okay, so uh, let's talk about how to do it in, in math. Okay, so... Um, so let's talk first about um, a matrix. And so a matrix is just a bunch of vectors stacked on top of each other. Your basic, everything's at an angle, that's so weird. Like I'm moving up and down, huh. Let's see if the mic cuts out again if I do this. So matrix, uh, I don't know, might look a little scary to some of you guys. Might not look scary. I don't know. Um, so your basic uh, matrix in 3D stuff looks like this. This is something called the identity matrix. The identity matrix is kind of like uh, when you multiply by one, right? It doesn't do anything. So um, let me just show you how we do things with matrices. So you typically will have some sort of point or something in the world. Like let's say that you've got like a triangle. Let's see here. So let's say you've got like a triangle in the world somewhere. This is X, this is Y. And you want to do nothing with it. <laughs> well, what happens is that you this is called a transformation matrix. What happens is you, um, in, in fact, you can, you can almost see it in Unreal Engine. Like when you look at the translate scale and uh, rotate, translate, rotate, and scale values, um, when you look at those values inside of the game engine, that's very. That's pretty close. Like what the transformation matrix looks like. There's actually some um, sines and cosines and things like that slapped onto it. But um, it's kind of kind of gives you the idea. So so what happens? So let's say you've got a point here, and this point is, uh, and we got a z, of course, going this way, as well. Uh, so let's say this guy's at one, two, three, four, four to the right. One, two, three, four, five up and one back. So he's at four, five, one. Okay. Now if I want to have absolutely nothing happen to this triangle, uh, it should, this transformation matrix should result in four, five, one. If I transform it and it doesn't do anything, it should return four, five, one. You guys, you guys understand? Like multiplying by one, like if you, if you, you know, multiply like y times one, you you should get y, right? Like, so the trend, so this one here with all the ones on the diagonals, this is the equivalent. I the identity matrix is the equivalent of multiplying by one. Okay, you get. Do you guys understand this? Like, what I mean conceptually? Like, I'm, I'm going to show you the math behind it, but like, um, I'm going to take this point here. I'm going to run it through the transformation matrix, and the transformation matrix tells me where it ends up. And so like if I were to rotate something 90 degrees, then the transformation matrix would be like, oh, it should be over here somewhere. You know, the, the and if I do that with all three of the points, then the, the, you know, or if I scale it, you know, like the transformation matrix should result in it, the, the triangle getting bigger like this. Um, for the identity matrix, nothing should happen. Like it should just return four, five, one. So let's go through the math of, um, uh, four, five, one, and then this little weird thing here, it's called W. So this is your X location, this is your Y location, this is your Z location, and this is always one. <laughs> so uh, it, it, make, it makes the thing work. Uh, it, it's, it's used, I guess, it, I guess it doesn't have to be one, but it's usually going to be one. Okay. Don't worry about it. So uh, how do we multiply? How do we multiply a matrix times a vector? So this is our lesson for today. How do you do a matrix times a vector? Okay. And so the way that you do it is there's two steps. The first step is 
Um, uh, turn the vector sideways, multiply down. Yeah, I'll show you what this means in a second. And step two, add across. And you'll end up with uh, another vector. Okay, so uh, we've got our thing here. So what do I mean by turn it sideways? Well, I mean it looks like this. Four, five, one, one. So I, I take the the vector that we normally write vertically. Normally the matrix is here and the, the vector is here vertically next to it. What we do is we turn it sideways and then one, one, one zero, 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 zero. And so what we do is we multiply down. So uh, we multiply each of these elements is gonna get multiplied by four. Okay, and so uh, the, uh, this is going to turn into a 4. 4 times 0 is 0, 0 is 0. And then we multiply it down this way as well. Hang on, I got somebody at the front door. Um, I'll be right back. Start recording again. Cool. So uh, 5 times 1 is 5. This becomes a 5. Zero, 5 times 0 is 0. So we multiply down, multiply down. 1 times anything's the same. 1 times anything's the same. Okay. So that's step 1. So that is step one. You uh, turn the vector sideways, multiply down each column. Huh. Multiply down each column. And then step two is you add across add across each row to get a new vector. So that's step one. Then step two is you go four plus zero plus zero plus zero is four. Zero plus five plus zero plus zero is five. Zero plus zero plus one plus zero is one. Zero plus zero plus zero plus one is one and voila we end up with the same um, vector that we started with exciting four five one one we ended up with four five one one neat did absolutely nothing what a waste of our time why are you explaining this to us well i wanted to show you that it how the how this works matrix times vector and if you if you're ever lost and confused um, just try multiplying by one you know, and see and see if you get the right result. Four five one one four five one one. Okay, so let's do a um, more interesting example. So let's uh, let's for our transformation matrix, let's do this one and let's switch it up to rainbow color. Okay, nope, that's way too thick a line. Example number two, okay? And so again, uh, these things represent like, every point is gonna have a transformation matrix run on it. Um, do I need you open right now? Man, I guess not. Um, okay, so here's example number two. And so again, let's say this person is at four, five, one, okay? Uh, so example number two, um, our matrix is 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 10, 20, 30. And we are going to multiply this by the same point we were working with before, 4, 5, 1, 1. But again, you're going to, you're going to do this for each of the three points on the triangle. So you have a triangle, and it's going to get rotated, scaled, and transformed. Uh, to actually end up at, at some place in the world. So uh, we got here 4511. Okay, and so it's this point, and so this point is about to get transformed. It's like some kids' 
cartoon show from the 1980s or something. Okay. Um, uh, all right, so let's do it. So uh, let's pick somebody at random, uh, Bedencourt. Uh, take it away. What's step one, Bedencourt? You are no longer muted. Bedencourt, you here? That's how you can tell when students go idle during your uh, your Zoom lectures. Hmm. All right. Uh, we'll pick somebody else at random. Shahab. Shahab, you here? Let's see how many students are actually alive right now. Okay. Okay. So what's step one, Shahab? We're going to multiply uh, this point times this transformation matrix, and we're going to end up where the we're going to try and figure out where this point ends up. What's step one? Uh, yeah. Uh, not not multiply across, multiply down. So step one is you. Um, uh, you take the vector and you uh, flip it sideways. Just make some room here. I don't want to redraw it. Uh, you re redraw it sideways like this: four, five, one, one, and you multiply down. So what is what is the first column uh, going to be? Should have. So each of these elements is going to get multiplied by four. Zero. What about this guy? What is four times one? So four is zero, zero, zero. Oh, I didn't need to leave the zeros, did I? Okay, let's delete you, and you are now a four. Okay, and then uh, what about five times zero, one, zero, zero? What's that gonna turn into? Yeah, so. That, and then one times that doesn't change. One times that doesn't change. And then step one is multiply down. And then step two is add across. Shemi, how did your uh, how did your linear algebra teacher explain it? Okay, so uh, we're gonna add across each of these elements, each of these rows. So Shahab, what is four plus ten? Fourteen. Second row, five plus twenty. Is that a 10? That's a 10. Uh, what is 5 plus 20? 25. Okay. What is 1 plus 30? My, my daughter wandered in last semester when I was doing this. She's like, this is college math. I'm like, yeah. She's like, I know how to add 1 plus 30. I'm like, yeah. yeah it's, not, it's not bad. Well, there's two whole steps. You have to do a multiplication and then an addition. Uh, 31. And then what's the last element you have? There you go. So, uh, so what happened? So our starting point was at four, five, one. Our ending point is at fourteen, twenty-five, thirty. So our ending point is going to be fourteen, twenty-five, thirty. It's going to be like way over here somewhere. Fourteen, twenty-five, thirty-one. Sorry. So it like shot like way off this way. It went, it went ten to the right. It went twenty north, and it went like thirty into the screen. Do you guys see that? So X was originally four, now it's 14. Y was originally five, it's now 25. Z was originally one, it's now 31. Do you guys see that? So it went 10 east, 20 north, and 30 in. Do you guys see that? That's the, that's the transformation. So um, take a look at the matrix. You guys see that there? 10, 20, 30. So that part of the matrix corresponds to how far east, north, and in uh, we're going to move the point. Okay. Yui, does this make sense to you? Okay. 
It's gone for like half of it? Okay, well. Uh, let me set it back the way it was originally. One, 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 zero, 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 zero. Okay, so what happens is that if you pass in um, a point, four, five, actually that was a one, wasn't it? If you pass in a point to this transformation matrix, you multiply down. So you multiply this column by four, this column by five. Let's not erase things randomly. Uh, this column by one, this column by one, and then you add across to get a new vector. So you pass in a vector. It's like, you know, f of, uh, I don't know, like some math thing, like f of x. But you pass in, you pass in some like vector or something like to this. And then you end up with a vector that's like, uh, I don't know, 10 east, 20 north, 20 north, and 30 n. That's what this means in English. That's what that means. That's what that transformation vector means. So this is this is how far east you're going to move, how far north you're going to move, and how far in you're going to move. Okay. We just ran through uh, all the multiplies and all the adds, and you can see that in fact it did move east and north and in. And um, this is how you make things move on the screen, right? You change like you can have a rocket ship, and the transformation matrix for the rocket ship would change every frame. The uh, the thing would move, you know, this much in whatever direction it's moving, you know, every frame. So, uh, you, uh, you do the next one. Uh, this one though, will just be purely conceptual. I'm going to give you a matrix and you're going to tell me how far east and north and in the, uh, the transformation matrix will move this stuff. Okay, so if, if this is our transformation matrix, how far is it going to move the point east? How far is it going to move the point north? Or south in this case? And how far is it going to move it in? 7 north, yep. Negative 8 east or 8 west, whatever. Or, no, south, south, south. Sorry, uh, no, you have it backwards. 7 east, it's 7 east and 8 south. This is, uh, this is X, this is Y, this is Z. Yeah. And then 6.3 N, yeah, it's, uh, that's my handwriting's fault. So, no worries there. Yeah, so it doesn't matter what the, um, the input point is. Uh, it will always move 7 East, 8 South, and 6.3 N. Okay. And if we do the math on this, uh, we'll see 4 times 1 is 4, plus 7 is 11. So it's going to end up with 7. 5 minus 8 is negative 3. 1 plus 6.3 is 7.3. And the bottom one is always 1. And so you can see this is before. This is before. This is after. All right. So uh, it moved 3. Uh, wait, that's not right. 4 plus 7 is 11. Come on. It's not letting me select the eraser, whatever. This one's 11. All right. 4 times 1 is 4. Add across is 7. You get 11. It is not letting me select the... Uh, is this doing something? Yeah, one note bugs out so often. It's so weird. Yeah, it's like it's clicking on it, but um, even though it's registering all the keystrokes, like it's not actually selecting that pin. It's so strange. I'll just quit out and watch it again. Um, So uh, one more time, Mr. Yui. Uh, yeah, let's 
registering the pin clicks again. Cool. Um, let's do this. Negative 10, 30, and negative 20. So what is uh, what direction is it going to move any point? Here, let's pick a different point. Let's pick you know, this point down here. This point down here might be 10, 1, 1. So 10, 1, 1 is the input. So what is what is the output going to be? Mr. Yui, if we if we're transforming this point here using this matrix, what uh yeah. So the x location is going to be zero because our transformation matrix says move ten left, right? Ten to the west. And then the y is going to be thirty one, very good. So it's moving north uh, by thirty. And then, uh, yeah, negative uh, 20 in, or I don't know how to describe that. So negative 19, and then the bottom one's one. Yeah. And so that that is a translation matrix. So, so this transformation here is to translate it based on these things. OK. So now let's talk about rotation. What's the fourth point? Nothing. It's W. W. That's W. What does it mean? Nothing. It, it's used for like weird special effects. Like if you were to make it two, uh, for example, all of these, uh, all all of these numbers would be effectively doubled, right? So it would double the effect of the translation. Uh, it's used. It's used if you're gonna like skew. Um, but for for the normal stuff, uh, it's always one. So, um, all right, so let's do rotation. So these three things here are um, translation. So let's talk about rotation. So let's go back to our first point, four, five, one, one. So these three numbers here um, are used for both scaling. Actually, let's do scaling. Let's do scaling. Let's do scaling first. That's even easier. Okay. So zero, zero, zero. And let's just scale this thing by two. There you go. This is the equivalent of times two. <laughs> All right. And so with this matrix here, uh, the point is just going to move twice as far away from the origin. So the 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 origin here is the um, is the center point for scaling. Okay, so they'll scale away from it. So if you wanted to scale normally, you'd center it around the the origin, and then it would get bigger, kind of in all directions. This thing is going to scale away from the from the origin. So if we uh, if we do our multiply down and add across, uh, Torona is here. Alex is here. Torona's. Okay, so uh, we are going to multiply all the elements in this column by four. So what do we what do we end up with? So uh, Ben Court's back. All right, cool. So four times two, four times zero, four times zero, four times zero. So what does this column turn into? Eight zero zero zero. Good. And so. Um, and then the next column becomes what? Five times zero, five times two, five times zero, five times zero. So we're 10, okay, next column. Zero, zero, two, zero, and then the last column, of course, is zero, 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 one. And so you add across. And so after you've, that's an eight, 
8 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0, you end up with 8. 0 plus 10 plus 0 plus 0 is 10. 0 plus 0 plus 2 plus 0 is 2. 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1 is 1. And so what you'll see is that all the numbers here uh, doubled, right? Uh, we we're at 4, 5, 1, and our location is now 8, 10, 2. So... rather than moving the triangle. See, what, what happened before was that this triangle would just move, uh, the triangle before would just move this way and this way and end a little bit. Uh, when you scale it, uh, uh, all the numbers here are gonna double, right? So if this is, I don't know, one, one, one. So you got three points on the triangle, one, 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 10, one, one, and four, five, one. All, the, all three of those numbers are gonna double. So it's gonna move to be, uh, 8, 10, 1, or 8, 10, 2, I guess, uh, here, and it's going to be 20, 2, 2, here, and it's going to be uh, 2, 2, 2, here, and so what you're going to see is that the triangle actually stays the same shape, but it gets twice as big, All right? So the thing expands by a factor of 2, so that's scaling. So uh, these three points here control translation. These three numbers here are the scale. And you can scale them separately in the x, y, and z directions. You don't have to make it um, you know, symmetrical. Uh, but in, in general, scaling looks better if you uh, do all three axes in the same, the same way. OK, so. That's scaling. Uh, let's do a pop quiz. Bed and court, you here? Okay, so bed and court, uh, our input vector is 4511. We're going to scale it by 10 this time. What is our output vector going to be? If you want, you can multiply down and add across. So uh, that'd be 40. Or you can just do it using the power of English. If we're going to scale, if we're going to scale four, five, one, ten times, what is the output? What is the output going to be? You do it the fast way or the slow way. It's all the same to me. Yep, very good. So the answer is forty, fifty, ten, one. Do you guys see that? So four times ten is forty. And you add across, 40 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 40. 5 times 10 is 50, plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 50. 1 times 10 is 10, plus 0 plus 0 is 10. And you can, you can combine the two also, right? Like, if you uh, do 10, 10, 10 here, it's going to add 10 to each of these values. So you can scale it by 10, and then add 10 to its location as well. Uh, all, you can do all three uh, operations in one operation, which is actually kind of nice. You can translate, you can rotate, you can scale, all with just one matrix operation. And if you guys have ever wondered why um, CPUs, uh, is there a reason why we do it with a matrix rather than just multiplying each direction by 10? Well, in, in this case, that's exactly what we're doing, right? Like, uh, but with a with a matrix, uh, you, can, you can have translation and rotation and scaling all done at the same time. So that rather than having to do all the linear algebra and then all the linear algebra, then all the linear algebra, uh, you can do it in one matrix operation. And CPUs and GPUs are optimized for this. If you've ever looked at like uh, SSE, um, uh, SSX, um, the skiing game, <laughs> Intel, <clears throat> AVX is the newest one.
MMX, SSC, yeah. So um, they're designed to um, do multiple ads. Like that's specifically four of them. <laughs> like that's the, uh, you know. So here we're doing four ads at the same time. And so Intel added a extension to their chipset called SSC, uh, which allows you to do a bunch of multiplies and a bunch of ads at the same time, specifically four. Why four? Because that's the size of the 3D matrix. It's a four by four matrix. And so it was specifically designed to optimize this computation right here. And so it can very, very quickly take a, take a four by four transformation matrix, specifically four by four for this reason, because we do 3D stuff. And you take a four by one vector and do a multiply and an add and get a result. And it can do that very, very quickly. And it's to speed up this thing. And so rather than having to do the translation separately and the rotation separately and the scaling separately, we combine them all together into one uh, matrix. And then we take in a point and it goes transformed through it, it gets rotated, gets scaled, gets translated, and then we get an output. Okay. So uh, let's do rotation now. Rotation. So, uh, let's do this, let's see, um, so if we do 90 degrees, it'll be zero, zero, one, one. Okay. So, uh, our input point is still going to be four, five, one. Okay. So let's take that point there as the input point. The point that we're going to be rotated around is always the origin. The point we scale around is always the origin. If you don't want it to be the case, then what you do is you translate it over the origin, rotate it, or you translate it to whatever point you want the point of rotation to be. And then you rotate around that. Like if you want to, if you want to rotate it around this point here, then you you translate it so that that point becomes the origin and then you rotate around that point. Okay, so we're, we're gonna have our, that's our input point, four, five, one. And this is our, this is our transformation matrix now. So let's see, let's see what we get. Let's see this negative one actually, sorry. Okay, so uh, so uh, let's see, Duncan, you here? Duncan, we have more people at Taco Bell right now than actually watching the lecture. I guess I'll put up a quiz for this. <laughs> it's so easy to just AFK on Zoom chats, right? Um, so I'll, I'll just I'll just put up a quiz before I put up the recording. How about that? <laughs> uh, see who was paying attention. Um, all right, so Duncan is not not responding. Uh, Davies, you here? Okay. So Davies, uh, take it away. So uh, each column one at a time. Uh, you're going to take four and multiply it times each of these elements here. So it's just vector times scalar. So what, what's our first column? Four times zero, zero. Yep. So it becomes zero, negative four is zero, zero. And uh, then the second column is what? So this is negative four. This becomes, second column is five zero 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 times one times one doesn't do anything then we add across so what is our new what is our new x value zero plus five plus zero plus zero is five yep there we go five negative four one one okay so this point here four five one gets rotated some space here 
So four five one uh, gets put at five negative four. So move to here. Okay. Now uh, do the same uh, Davies with ten one one. So ten one one uh, is our input point. What is our output point? Ten one one. It's easier to see rotations when you do more than just one point, you know, because that could be a translation as far as we know, right? So uh, if ten one one is the input, that's negative one. Okay. If uh, ten one one is the input, what is the output? So it will be 1, 10 times negative 1 is negative 10, add across, negative 10. Okay, so it's going to be at 1, negative 10 over here. And then if we pass in 1, 1, 1 for the third point here, that point's 1, 1, 1. What is our out output point? One negative one, right? One times negative one is negative one. One times one is one. Yeah. Okay. So it's x is equal to one, y is equal to negative one. So what we see here is that our triangle just got rotated ninety degrees to the right. So this was a right rotation by ninety degrees. And uh, if I flip the signs on these two things here, then it would be a left rotation. Uh, Four times uh, would be five negative four. Let's see here. Yeah. So it'd be something like this. If I switch the signs, it'd be a left rotation by 90 degrees. And if uh, I did negative one, negative one, zero, zero, then this would be a 180 degree rotation. So with negative one, negative one there, then four becomes negative four, five becomes negative five, so it becomes a 180 degree rotation here. So what is the, what is the formula here? The formula for these four things here and I'm not rotating around the z-axis at all. I'm just rotating. Uh, on, uh, I'm just doing like a 2D rotation, essentially. Uh, notice I was leaving z out of it. Leave Brittany out of it. Okay. Um, the equation is, I might need to make this a little bigger. Cosine. Hmm. Cosine of theta, cosine of theta, negative sine of theta, and sine of theta. Theta is how many degrees we're going to rotate. Okay, so that is the um, that is the that's a your rotation. Okay, so if you want to rotate something forty-five degrees, then these numbers are going to get different from just ones and negative ones, right? So if we want to rotate it 30 degrees to the right, then um, if we want to rotate it 30 degrees to the right, uh, 30 degrees, trig, cosine. So transformation uh, transformation matrix to rotate something 30 degrees to the right, no translation, uh, and we're not doing, we're just rotating it on the 2D coordinate system. Uh, let's see here, zero, zero. So it'd be the cosine of 30 degrees, which is 0 0.86, 0 0.86, and then the cosine of 30 degrees, Five. So this 
going to be negative 0.5 and 0.5. And so this is the transformation matrix. This, in plain English, this is rotate clockwise 30 degrees. Okay. What do you guys think? Trig. Is that roll picture? Yeah, it is. Um, uh, the Z axis kind of goes through the plane like this. It's a rotation around the z-axis. So this is yaw, technically. But, I mean, it's a, it's a 2D rotation. So, because uh, I'm, I'm sort of, I can't, I can't draw, like, arbitrary, like, 3D rotations. So I'm just having it, uh, it's just doing this around the, uh, uh, well, uh, this is this is a rotation around the z-axis. If you want the uh, if you want to rotate around the other axes, then there's other equations as well for that. Um, yeah, there's there's the planar like two D rotation that we're talking about. So if you want to rotate around the x-axis, uh, it's this one. If you want to rotate around the y-axis, it's this one. If you want to rotate around the z-axis, which is what we just did. Uh, angle. Okay, I think they're using positive this way. Um, then these two things are flipped. Because I was saying a positive rotation is that way, but it, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, and you can combine these three things like this. There you go. You're welcome. <laughs> there is the general equation. <laughs> so rotating alpha around the z-axis, beta around the y-axis, and gamma around the uh, x-axis. There's... Uh, I, I hope that helps, Shammy. <laughs> I expect you guys all have this memorized by, uh, by 5 o'clock tonight. Uh, yeah, I, I look it up. Like, I don't, I don't, um, yeah. I don't know if Quiz due by 4 p.m. Yeah, before the, before the, uh, before the video goes up, uh, you're gonna have to do this in your head. <laughs> yeah, well. Um, yeah, that's why I was just showing the rotation around Z. Because I, I, I think this part at least is pretty, pretty comprehensible. Uh, but, I mean, you are doing three different rotations at once, you know, here. And, um, yeah, so it's going to rotate around the three different axes, and then, um, hmm, let's see if there's anything else we need to worry about here. Um, nah, okay. So, uh, so we can combine them, all right? So if, if, uh, if we do this, so this is a rotate clockwise 30 degrees. Um, if I also combine this with like, uh, I don't know, like 10, 20, 30, then it's going to rotate and then translate 10, right? So if you have a triangle like this, it's going to rotate it over here. And then it's going to move it 10 this way and 20 this way and 30 in. And you're going to end up with a triangle. over there somewhere okay and if you were to combine this with scaling let's say um, let's uh, just erase the uh, little dot there oh. so that is a hundred times bigger <laughs> so it's gonna it's going to rotate and it's gonna scale up by a factor of a hundred 
and then it's going to move to the right and up and then and you're going to end up with this big ass triangle like over here somewhere so that that is the that is the big takeaway for today is that you can do rotation and scaling and translation all at the same time and um and in fact if you um then do another translation on top of it let's say that you uh like you have a rocket ship you know and uh, it moves like five to the right then all you have to do is change that number from a 10 to a 15 and you're good it's now moved five to the right so all these things where you see objects flying around the world and all this stuff all that's really happening the rocket ship isn't changing the rocket ship's probably just a model on disk somewhere and it's not changing like the model itself's not changing what's happening is the place where we draw it in the world changes and that's how we change it we change it like if, if i want to make it uh go up a bunch i could change it from 20 in the north direction to 30 in the north direction and then th that would have the effect of translating the rocket ship north 10. do you guys understand and so all these things when you're like moving things and you're like adding world offset or like rotating something all that is doing is just changing like a number or like for a rotation like maybe four numbers in in its transformation matrix and that's it um the rocket ship has a transformation matrix associated with it and when it comes time to render it takes all of the different points inside of the rocket ship it doesn't have to just be a, one triangle it could be a bunch of different triangles or whatever and uh, it, it'll get rotated and scaled and translated into place and then each of the triangles inside of it get, get rasterized they get drawn on the screen and that's where pixels come from so that's this is this is the this is the most fundamental this is the most fundamental concept in 3d gaming is that you have a transformation matrix and you've got your models the models are just sitting on discs they don't know where they are in the video game it's just a model like somebody you know modeled a spaceship or somebody modeled uh, a kmart sign or something like that they don't know where it's going to go in the world it's just a kmart sign you know and then when the uh, person in Unreal Engine wants to put the Kmart sign at that location, they click and drag on the arrows, right? They go, whoop, like, you know, and when you see that thing sliding like that, what's happening is that these numbers are going uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, you know, you're just dragging it to the right. All that, all that's happening is that one number is changing in a, in a transformation matrix. And then the thing refreshes the screen and it draws it in the new place. Do you get, does that make sense to you guys? Like, um, yeah, the Kmart sign on disc isn't changing. You just have, you just have a model and then it's got just one mate, like it's got a matrix associated with it. And, um, um, as you move it up in the Y direction, then this will go 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, you just pull it up. I'm getting silence from people who aren't shammy who's taken linear algebra before. So let's do let's do a quiz. Let's do a sample quiz to prepare you for the quiz. Alright. Alright, alright. So let's go here. Zero, negative one, one, zero. Uh one, negative ten, negative twenty, negative thirty. So, uh, uh, who is here? Um, Hannibal, are you here? That equation beefy? You hear Hannibal? All right, cool. All right, so explain to me, I got a rocket ship. This is its transformation matrix. What is it doing? I'll just give you as a spoiler, it's doing all three. So it's doing a translation, it's doing a rotation, and it's doing a scaling. So in English, What is this doing? Here's the equation for 
uh, rotation. What's, what's going on here? What are we What are we doing to this? Do we get values? Uh, this is the This is the transformation matrix. So, in just plain English, uh, how far is it translating? How far is it scaling? How far is it rotating? These are the values right here. So I will tell you we are rotating, we are scaling, and we are translating. So how much? Translation's the easy one. Let's start with that. How far is it moving the triangle, rocket ship, whatever? How far is it moving the triangle west, south, and towards us? And then Crinte, you're you're gonna be up next. Crinte, are you here? Or how many people just leave zoom on? Gotta have like a AFK or something. You exist, awesome. Alright, cool. Kinda of confused. I, I'm used to the previous examples with numbers. These are the numbers right here. Are, are, can you not see that? Oh I see. Uh yeah, you, uh yeah, I mean, okay, we, we can we can actually pass in a number here, like four, five, one, but it's gonna be it's gonna be doing all three of the things at once. So it's what's important is to just to be able to look at the transformation matrix and figure out what it's doing just from looking at it. So you you could come up with the numbers, you know, and this would be fifty minus ten is forty. Negative 40 minus 20 is negative 60. 1 times 10 is 10 minus 30 is negative 20. And 1. So this is the, if this is the input, then that's the output. But I don't know how much that would be helpful. So if you pass in 4, 5, 1, it is turning into 40, 60, negative 20. But uh, but remember, like a rotation does move it, but that's not what we consider the translation component. The translation component, uh, the top row is going 40 west. Uh, no, this this number here means we're going to move all the points 10 west. So the uh, so it's uh, x, y, and z are the uh, what these three numbers mean. So this means move 10 west, or negative 10 east, whichever. This means move 20 nor negative 20 north or 20 south, and this means move 30 this way on the z z axis. Okay, I gave that one to you. So now try to tell me what is the scaling factor. How much bigger is the? How much bigger is it going to get? Scaling factor is by 10. Excellent. All right, Crente, you're up next. Well done, Hannibal. Um, all right, Crente, what is the... We know the scaling factor is 10, so we can sort of ignore the 10s, just treat them as 1s. What is theta? How much are we rotating? I keep wanting to say rotatoes, like from uh, Lord of the Rings. Rotatoes. They're rotatoes. Um, what, is, uh, what is theta? Granted, you've had uh, you've had a uh, trig, right? Pretty sure. Rotato potato. Um, rotatoes. <laughs> so what is uh? So we know the scaling factor multiplied all those things by ten. So the original the OG number was negative one and one one. Uh, so what is what is theta going to be here? I may or may not have been doing other stuff. <laughs> uh, so this part here is the rotation around the z-axis. So uh, if you have a theta 
of 90 degrees, and I guess on Wikipedia, theta goes the other way, but I don't really care. Um, you just pick one and stick with it. Um, some some coordinate systems are left-handed, some coordinate systems are right-handed. It's just kind of irritating to deal with, but you know, we, we, we soldier on. So theta is how far uh, we are gonna move, how far we're gonna rotate, it's a 90, believe it or not, how far we're gonna rotate the triangle to the right. Okay, so what is theta if we're gonna end up with uh, this part right here? Cosine, cosine, sine, negative sine. 180 degrees is incorrect. The cosine of 180 degrees is negative one, right? So the top left corner here would be negative one if we were doing a 180 degree rotation. 90 degrees, yeah, that's in fact that transformation right here. So this whole thing overall, uh, using the unit circle, I don't know, maybe. Um, this whole transformation matrix overall, in English I describe it as uh, rotate 90 degrees clockwise, scale by 10 times, then translate 10 west, 20 south, and 30 towards us. So this this is the English, this is the English conversion of this transformation matrix. Here. is rotating by 90 degrees, then it scales 10 times, then it translates. Okay, that's the order that it goes in. Okay, do you guys uh, want to do one more of those so I can pick on more people? Yeah, you know, I'm going to leave that up. And then I'm just going to make a new one so you guys can view that. That's being read from left to right. Uh, no, you look at the rotation, then the scaling, then the translation, kind of. For, you kind of have to uh, account for the scaling, I guess, first. Um, yeah, no, this this, uh, this matrix, just get, you take a point, you apply it to it, and it's going to be rotated and scaled and translated all at the same time. But, like, if you want to know, do I translate, then rotate, or do I rotate, then translate, that's the order that kind of the things happening. It rotates 90 degrees clockwise, it then multiplies by 10, then it translates. All right. Um, all right, so let's do a new matrix. to scale for the rotations in this case. Um, well, let's, uh, let's go through it. So, all right, uh, all right, so Aaron, what is the, what is the scale on this one? How much is it scaling the, how much is it scaling the um, triangle by? It is not scaling by negative two because that is a positive number. What is the scale factor on this one? How much bigger is it making in the triangle?
So in plain English, this is doing a rotation, it's doing a scaling, it's doing a translation. When we're trying to parse it, usually I start with a scale, I guess. So how much is this going to be scaling the um, the points by? Aaron. Scaling by two, very good. So if you do that, you can sort of mentally come in here and be like, all right, uh, I know that the scaling is by two. Oh, it's doing the thing again, cool. So I'll just turn those into ones. And so now uh, we have negative one, negative one, and one. What rotation is this? Such a quality product. Okay, so what uh, what uh, what rotation are we doing here? Here's the equation: cosine theta, sine theta, negative sine theta, cosine theta. What is the um, what is theta? Look at this. Rotation is 180 degrees, very good. Yep, cosine of 180 is negative one, right? Rotate by 180 degrees, doesn't matter if it's clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay, and then uh, Simmons, what is the uh, translation? How far are we moving? How far are we moving the triangle east and away from us? Uh, two? Uh, no, we're scaling by two. Uh, so um, we're making it twice as big. That's why these two number. That's why these three numbers here are multiplied by two. But how far is it going to move east, and how far is it going to move north? What 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 is our? Uh, how much are we translating it by? Okay, so it's going to be five east. How much north? Zero north, and then how far? away from us is it going? Ten, very good. Ten, n, or whatever. Okay, so this part is always, this is always the x, the y, and the z. So that's the x, that's the y, that's the z. This part here handles the rotation and scaling. That's the rule. This part down here is almost always all zeros. Uh, it's used for um, special effects, usually. It's usually just zeros. Um, maybe like for reflections or skews and things like that. Let's see if we can find some uh, examples where they No, album of zero zero one. <laughs> yeah, but you can do reflections and shearing and things like that. There's other transformations as well you can do, but um, that's kind of that's kind of the basis base, basics of it. Um, who have I not called on? Yui Shammy. All right, Shammy, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you one. Oh, somebody's at the front door. Sorry. Okay, so Shami, what is your final answer? What is our rotation? What is our scaling? What is our translation?
Rotate 180. Okay. Scale by 20. Okay. And translate by the same amount as before. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Um, so that's what your uh, uh, that's what your quiz is going to be like. Um, okay, so yeah, these these four numbers here are the uh, the rotation part around the the z axis, and it's cosine theta, sine theta, negative sine theta, cosine theta. And if you think I have that memorized, I don't. I when I was, when I was doing, it, I was just sitting there like kind of working it out in my head. Okay. All right, um, and so when you understand that, then you, then like um, that's sort of the mathematical underpinning of everything in in three D, right? Like if you look at the source code for Quake or Unreal, like it's all it's all the same. Like they all just use matrices under the hood. Um, sometimes you'll see something called a quaternion, which is sort of a different way of uh, is this interesting okay so that I think that's a good stopping point for today um, hmm no there, there there is one more thing I want to show you all right so I'm gonna fire up Unreal Engine real fast I got I got 17 minutes we can do this um, it's something I meant to show you guys back when we were doing landscaping and it's pretty cool you might want to add it to your you might want to add it to your uh, more suffering no 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 this is cool um, your your quiz is gonna be on the math stuff. The, this uh this could be this could be cool. You might like this. Uh, library summer twenty twenty one. And that's the water system. So. The water system is um, a pretty cool, neat thing. Um, you, in order to enable it, you have to go into uh, plugins, maybe. No. Yeah. So under uh, under edit plugins, uh, there is water down here, and you have to turn that on. Yep. So. Um, there's um, a lot of different plugins they have uh, shallow water maybe uh, I wonder if that needs to be beta version let's try that um, water yeah okay water shallow water okay um so there's all sorts of different plugins. Uh, there's like the uh, AI perception system, which is going to be in here somewhere. Um, yeah, uh, that is that. And then we need to restart uh, Unreal Engine to load a plugin. You have to actually reboot the uh, editor. So, um, and that comes back up. We will see that Wata has been enabled. All right, cool. All right, so now, um, field to load, level start, animations, level start, and level start montage. Hmm. Well, I'm not using it, so who cares? All right, so we've got this, and I've got, I've got kind of my, uh, I've got kind of some water in here already. Um, but it's not, um, it's just a plane, right? And so the way that I did lakes before was I uh, carved up the landscape, hopefully in interesting ways, and I just added a plane to it and then added, uh, I messed with the material surface a little bit so that uh, we have like waves at different sizes and frequencies kind of coming around. The water plugin is pretty cool. It's, um, it actually will cut into the landscape itself so it actually interacts with the landscape in an interesting fashion. And um, if you come over here to the Place Actors tab, 
you will see that there are different um, these different options for water, and uh, we can like add a lake. Uh, this area over here looks like a good place for a lake. So you just drag that over there, and you can scale it up. Let's see, there's the lake there. it up at all. Um, fix landscape. Let's try this again. These things aren't loading properly. Hmm. I'm supposed to just uh, do the water. Um, I'll, I'll have to look into this. It looks like it's not loading for some reason. Um, okay. Well, never mind. Guess we won't do that today. Uh, but yeah, you uh, you turn on the plugins and then you can put. Uh, you just put rivers and things like that into the world, and uh, it looks like these materials maybe aren't loading. No, they are. It's not drawing anything though. Hmm. Well, I'll, I'll have to take a look at that and see if I can figure out what's going on with it. But it's a, it's a pretty cool system. So that's it for today. And uh, so I will, I will put up the math quiz for you guys. I know how much you guys all love math. And so we'll put up math quiz. And it'll be like, take a vector, multiply it by a matrix, write down the result. Maybe do one or, one or two of those. And maybe uh, look at a transformation matrix and tell me what the translation, rotation, and scale is. OK. So. Uh, Keep working on your project. It's now lab time, so spend at least an hour working on it. Uh, work on your mod, work on your project. And uh, if you need any help, uh, I'll be here. Okay. So that's it for today, guys. And uh, I'll see if I can figure out what's going on with these things. These things look like they're just not loading for some reason. It's a little weird. Okay. I don't know. I'll, I'll play with it. All right. See you guys.